Hey guys, Angus here with another Airsoft review today. Today we're going to take a look at a pretty cool gun for external construction, but uh, performance-wise it's not the best. We're going to be taking a look at the a k 870 style spring action airsoft shotgun. Now if you're interested in purchasing this gun after you watch this review, there's a link down below in the description to airsoftstation.com where you can purchase this gun for about $64. If you're interested in taking $5 off, use our coupon code DEATHCORE. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get into this review. For starters, let's open up this packaging and see what's included when you purchase the A&K 870 from AirsoftStation.com. The box your gun comes in is just a cardboard box, nothing flashy about it, it's a cardboard box. However, upon removal of the cardboard box top, you'll see a decently packaged gun. It's packaged in this very flimsy white styrofoam. Honestly, the box feels like it's about to snap in my hands. So, the packaging of this gun is alright. Uh, the gun could shift around a little bit during shipping, but otherwise it is packaged decently well in this white styrofoam. Inside the box, you do have a small black bag of about 100-200 BBs. Uh, these are pretty crappy. I would not recommend you using these. A small plastic bag containing various replacement screws, two Allen keys, one designated for your hop-up, and a small screwdriver, your metal 30-40 to 40 round shotgun magazine, an actually rather short dejamming rod for the shotgun, and your A&K 870 style spring action shotgun itself. Now when you first take this gun out of the box, You'll probably be very pleased by the feel of it. It honestly feels very, very realistic. It does have the full metal body on it, so it feels really nice. It's got a great weight to it. It's a little over 5 pounds, so it's one of those more weighted shotguns. It's not like some of the plastic construction ones where they're only maybe 2-3 pounds tops. It's got a nice weight to it, and if you're like me, I was honestly quite surprised when I picked it out of the box because external quality, it's a really nice shotgun. So with that being said, we're going to do things a little bit different here. Instead of going into the external construction, we're going to go ahead and start with the features before moving on to the external and performance aspects of the review, as I do have quite a bit to say about them. So let's go ahead and get into some features of the AMK 870. Now this being a spring action shotgun, you do have to cock it each time you want to fire. Now in order to cock the gun, this is pretty simple information, all you have to do is pull the pump back and push it forward. Now at first, when I first pulled this out of the box, the pump was a little stiff, but it did break in after a while after putting, you know, magazine in it, it became a little bit easier to pull the pump back. Now, pretty simple. Pull back like so. Now, unlike some other shotguns, it doesn't have the spring back here to aid you in pushing it forward. The shotgun will just stick. You have to push it forward manually, like so. And at that point, the shotgun is cocked and you're capable of firing. Now, with this shotgun, is a little bit of a con here. If this is off maybe a fraction of a centimeter, not pushed forward all the way, the trigger will simply click and the gun will not fire. So you have to make sure this is pushed forward all the way in order to have your gun fire. But pump started out very stiff but did break in after a while. The pump itself is actually constructed out of a nice quality ABS plastic. This being a spring shotgun, you do have to cock it each time. If you wanted a semi-automatic shotgun, you'd have to go with a you have to go with a gas model. Moving backward on the shotgun, here is the weapon's magazine. Now the magazine is your typical shotgun magazine for the 870. It's constructed of metal and is located of course on the underside of the gun. Now in order to eject the magazine, you have to push in these two buttons on both sides of the magazine. When you push in, the magazine will pull out like so. It's tucked in that magwell very well, so I imagine if you accidentally push these, you'd really have to hold them down for a while in order to have that magazine just drop out on you accidentally. Now the magazine, as I mentioned, is constructed of metal, loads at the top via just a normal speed loader, which for some reason this gun does not include any form of tool to help speed load the gun, but it is pretty easy to simply load this up with your finger. It holds about 30 to 40 rounds, which is great for a shotgun. You'll get quite a few shots off of it. I was actually able to do the entire shooting test for this gun with just one magazine, considering I only fire around the 30, 40 shot area. With this shotgun, you should probably put maybe some, at least .2s of course, but I'd recommend really some .28s or some or some .3s, because this shotgun really does seem to have some accuracy problems. As for feeding issues with the magazine, I did actually have quite a few. Due to the way the magazine goes in, you really have to get it in there in a certain spot in order to feed it. But with this shotgun, the magazine was in, clicked in, and the shotgun did not want to feed BBs out of that magazine. That actually dumbed down a little bit after a while, but it is really important that you put this magazine in correctly. Let me show you how to put it in. The magazine, when you go to put it in, it may seem like it's locked in place, but it actually isn't. You can simply push like so, and you'll notice, hey, it's not falling out. That must mean the magazine is in, but actually, it's nowhere near to being locked in. It may look like it. It may feel sturdy in there, a little bit of wobble, but it's not locked in at all. What you have to do is you have to take the lip of the magazine, the front of the magazine, then push forward on the back, 
and push all the way up until you hear that loud click. That means the magazine is in and ready to feed. If you were to push up, if you were to put it in the same way, only push it slightly until you feel it's secure, the magazine's actually not in. So when you're putting the magazine in, make sure you push it all the way up to hear that click. I've had times when when I first got this gun to go out there and shoot it, and I was wondering why the magazine isn't feeding. It's because you put it in, and you almost hear a tiny, tiny click, and you think it's locked in, but it really isn't. So make sure you hear that loud click. I think the magazine on this gun does have a couple feeding issues, and putting it in really have to get it spot on. The NK870 does have a functioning safety located on the trigger guard. It is this small button located right here. It's kind of the same with a lot of shotguns out there. You simply push it from each side in order to change it from safety to fire. Now in order to have your gun on fire, the safety does have to be pushed to the left side of the gun. As you can see, I am capable of pulling the trigger. If I were to push the safety over, you'll see it pop out on the right side of the gun. As you can see, the trigger cannot be pulled. So remember, when you're off the field, always keep that gun on safety, which would be on the right side of the gun, not on the left as it is now. On the left, capable of firing, push it through to the right, the gun is on safety. The, the shotgun does have two sling mounts, one located on the stock and one located just in front of the pump on the gun's magazine tube. As you can see, it does have that hop-up sticker on there that you can cut off when this is your gun to own. Both sling mounts are constructed of metal. Alright, so now that we've covered this gun's relatively simple features, being a shotgun, it doesn't have too many fancy gadgets on here we have to cover. So let's go ahead and talk about the gun's external construction as well as its performance aspect. External construction, it's a really nice external gun. Cosmetically, it looks great. My opinion, if you were someone who had a collection and you didn't want to spend too much money but you wanted a nice shotgun, I think this would be a cool one to put in your wall because externally it's really, really nice. It's full metal. Your outer barrel is constructed of metal. Your magazine tube down here is constructed of metal. The body of the shotgun is constructed of metal. Your trigger and trigger guard are constructed of metal. And your magazine is constructed of metal as well as the sling mounts, as well as the screws holding the gun together. The ABS plastic pieces on the gun include the stock and your pump. The ABS plastic pieces on this gun are very sturdy, very solid stock. I believe there's a weight inside it, so it adds a nice chunky bit of weight to the back here feels really nice and your hands really realistic and the pump feel, it is constructed of plastic but it feels perfectly fine it feels really natural amongst all the heavy metal on here of course you got your big ugly orange tip up here this is of course constructed of plastic but you should keep it on especially with all this stuff with the SB798 going on right now you don't want to be running around in public with a really realistic looking shotgun considering the weight and the appearance of this thing it does look pretty menacing the metal construction on here, it's very solid. The paint job's great. I've experienced no scratches on here except for a slight one up on top of the barrel after taking this out in the field a couple times to test it out. Like I said, the stock's really, really nice. It's constructed ABS, but it has the weight in it, which really makes a difference. It feels very comfortable. And as you can see, the stock's actually textured where you'd be gripping it, and the texture honestly feels very, very nice in your hands. It'll give you a slightly better grip, and it's a little bit more comfortable than gripping a perfectly smooth stock on here in my opinion. So external quality, this is a very, very nice shotgun. In my opinion, if you're, like I said, if you're a collector looking to purchase a shotgun to hang on your wall, this could be it. But performance-wise is where this shotgun seems to fail. As I mentioned in the features, the magazine, of course, does have that slight feeding issue. It seems that even the magazine is clicked in, the gun doesn't want to take those BBs upward. I've noticed that's dumb, that dumbed down after a time. When I first put a, the first magazine through it, I had to cock and shoot at least 10 times before finally the BBs started feeding. That number slowly reduced over time until this point I only have maybe once in a while I'll get a strange feeding issue and that'll be about it. It's not that the magazine isn't locking in, it's that when you cock the pump back it doesn't seem to be having enough strength to pull that BB into the chamber to be fired. Uh, jamming on this gun, there was a little bit of jamming I, I experienced uh, right away when I first pulled it out of the box. It doesn't seem to be doing that too much anymore. And accuracy is where this gun kind of fails. Accuracy on it using .28s, if you watch the shooting test, um, it wasn't very, very accurate. It would have a really picky hop up. It seems one BB would go right in, hit the target, the next BB would hit the ground, and the next BB would fly over. So accuracy is not consistent at all on this shotgun. If I was using this, I'd use it inside close quarters battle, 30 feet or less, because that basically has a guaranteed hit on a human sized target and possibly on a headshot target. So really, performance wise, this shotgun isn't the best, but external construction wise, it's a really, really nice shotgun. Let's just go ahead and get into the final conclusion of this review right now. 
because I've been saying it the whole time. External construction, it's a nice shotgun. You got your metal body, the only plastic pieces on this thing being the stock, which is still very nice with that weight in it, and the ABS pump. So, external construction, it's a great gun. Performance-wise, it could stand a little work. The pump is tough at first to pull back, but it does break in after time. Some metal sling mounts on here are nice. Again, I'd be using the, I would definitely not use this as a primary backup, sling it over my back. Guns Magazine seems to have a couple feeding issues. You really got to get it in there perfectly, but 30 to 40 rounds, if you were taking this out into the field, you should have quite a good amount of ammo for a game. Safety, of course you want to have a safety on your gun. Always keep it on safety when you're off the field located on the trigger guard in a position. It's not in a position where you can accidentally knock it on a safety with your finger. And this texture on the stock is really, really nice. It's a very comfortable and realistic, nice feeling gun to hold. But performance wise, it's just a gun I really wouldn't use. I'd rather have a more reliable shotgun without the potential for a feeding issue and the inconsistent accuracy. So with that being said, I'd recommend this gun if you're someone who wants a nice wall hanger possibly. Or if you're someone who knows they're going to be playing ZQB, and considering the gun's only shooting 330, 350 FPS, they want something they can hit a target pretty well at 30 feet. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and wrap up this review. If you're interested in purchasing A&K's 870 style spring airsoft shotgun, link down below in the description, airsoftstation.com. And thanks for watching Deathcore Airsoft's review on A&K's 870 shotgun. Thanks for watching, guys. Please subscribe.